the Toronto condo market is down. At least that's what some of the reports are saying and it's probably true for some parts of the city, just not everywhere. And in one of the world's most expensive real estate markets, it's no surprise that in some parts of the city, condo prices haven't gone back up to where they were even just six months ago. And that's based on reports that use the average price in specific communities. So in this video, I wanna share with you the top three areas of the city where condo prices came down based on some of these reports. But I also wanna share with you a few examples that show you why you can't always rely on just the overall market data. The first area is the Bay Street Corridor in downtown Toronto. It's the area from Bloor to Front between Young and University. It's more commonly known for areas like the Financial District, Nathan Phillips Square, Toronto Eaton Centre and Young and Dundas. There's over 50 condo buildings in the area and another 17 condo projects currently pending. There's seven TTC subway stops that connects the community so you can only imagine how dense the area is which also adds to the reason why it's a popular destination to live in and as a top destination you'll see some of the highest condo prices in this part of downtown Toronto. According to an MLS report condo prices were down 12% compared to last month and compared to a year ago prices are about the same with no change. Here's an example I found a one bedroom condo unit on Bay Street sold in January for $715,000. It has laminate floors, a quartz countertop in the kitchen and a pretty good layout. Here's the next one. It's a similar unit across the street. One bedroom also has an excellent floor plan and this one's actually on a lower floor. Both of them are less than 600 square feet and include parking. But despite being the same in several features, this one's sold for $590,000. That's about an 18% difference. There might be a small difference in the square footage and the first one is in a building that's about six years newer. But these two facts alone are not enough reason to justify the huge price gap. So what happened here? Why did prices go down 18%? Yes, interest rates are high and push prices down, but that alone couldn't have affected the prices that much since there was no change to the prime rate during that time. If anything, the market was pretty stable and might be leaning a bit towards buyers and still is. How long that ends up lasting is another story and I'll save that for another video. But for these two condos, either one buyer overpaid or one of them got an incredible deal. And when you look at the average sales prices in January and February, they show that prices trended down on a monthly basis to about $630,000, which means that the buyer of the $715,000 condo might have overpaid on the purchase and the buyer who got their condo for $590,000 probably got a deal. So here's the takeaway. If you're looking in the Bay Street corridor and find a 600 square foot condo with one bedroom for less than $600,000 and also includes parking, that's a deal. And by the way, I'm Fred Tam. If you're new to the channel and you're gaining value from this video, hit subscribe. New videos are always coming out to help you reach your real estate goals. The next area is literally across the street and it's the Church Young Corridor between Young and Jarvis. Prices were down 11% compared to a month ago based on the average prices and compared to a year ago, they're down by about 6%. There's an example I found that lined up with the market stats from MLS. Two units, both with two bedrooms and one bathroom, features and everything more or less the same, sold in the same building at Dundas and Mutual Street. This year, one of them sold for $662,000. Last year, the other one sold for almost exactly the same price at $661,000. It also doesn't include parking, yet, it sold for the same price. So when you consider all of this, then yes, you can safely say that this part of the condo market is down by about 6%. This reminds me of the times when you could buy a condo and just a few short years later, you'd see an equity increase of more than 15%. But I mean, right now we're in a real estate market that's considered to be a correction to what was happening over the last few years. When people who owned real estate saw these massive equity gains in short periods of time, real estate values went up way too high as they always do. And right now it's a slower market. Here's another example. At Young and Bloor, this two bed, two bath condo unit with parking sold for 1.6 million last year. It only took 10 days to sell, 817 square feet. It's got an amazing view of the scene tower, windows everywhere because it's a corner unit with a balcony that wraps around. This year, the same exact floor plan, just one floor below, sold for 20,000 less at 1.14 million in just 12 days. That's about $1,400 a square foot. And this is why it's so important to not rely just on the numbers alone that you see in the market updates, but to also understand what's going on in the specific community or building that you're looking into. Because the risk with just relying on the changing numbers every year is that one report could say that prices are down compared to last year, and that could very well be the case in the general community. In the two examples of communities that we just looked at, both span across a three kilometer distance from one end to the other. And together there are more than 110 10 condo buildings in that area. On top of that, there's also about 40 pre-construction condo projects planned over the next few years. All of these buildings will vary in property age, features, luxury, 
unit sizes, and so much more. If you're relying on the numbers at an aggregate level, just be careful doing this. And I suggest instead diving into what's happening in a tighter area, like on a specific street or even in the same building when it comes to condos. This kind of information is more accurate and will tell you what's going on and what you can expect in terms of how the market is at that point in time. Okay, now the third area that saw an overall price drop was in the West End of Toronto at High Park. It's down 6% compared to last month and down 7% compared to a year ago. Go. This example I'm about to show you really reinforces what I was just saying about not 100% relying on aggregated high-level market update numbers. A condo unit at the intersection of Windermere and Lakeshore sold last year for $520,000. One bed, one bath with parking, nice unit built in 2007, low maintenance fees that includes all utilities, and it shows really well. This year, a similar unit in the same building sold for $550,000. Slight increase of about 6% from last year, definitely not the downward trend of 7% that the MLS report shows. Here's one more in the same area. This one is a one bedroom unit with a den and two bathrooms and parking included. It has about 680 square feet of living space. This one sold for $660,000. And this year, a similar unit sold for $715,000. That's an 8% increase in just one year. Doesn't follow the market update for this area that says prices are down by about 7%. Most people wouldn't think that the market is still down in this specific community if they only relied on market reports without researching or talking with someone who knows the market area. But when you really dive into the specific area that you're looking into, you'll see that the market report are a general guide of information to start the conversation of where the market is and not a detailed comprehensive view of every single community in the city. And I guess that's why they say that you can't always trust what's in the news, especially in the case of real estate, because when you hear about market updates for the city of Toronto or any other major city, think about how big that city actually is and question whether or not it's actually possible that home prices in each individual community is following exactly what's happening in the next community over. Chances are they're not all following the same trends for their own reasons like density, property age, luxury, and what these individual communities have to offer in terms of transit, proximity to highways, amenities, and entertainment. It's always great to get a market update, but you should always find out the specific updates and information tailored to a specific area by asking the right questions. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you gain value, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.